1. The Universe Attitude of the Father For ages the inhabitants of Urantia have misunderstood the providence of God. There is a providence of divine outworking on your world, but it is not the childish, arbitrary, and material ministry many mortals have conceived it to be. The providence of God consists in the interlocking activities of the celestial beings and the divine spirits who, in accordance with cosmic law, unceasingly labor for the honor of God and for the spiritual advancement of His universe children. Can you not advance in your concept of God's dealing with man to that level where you recognize that the watchword of the universe is progress? Through long ages the human race has struggled to reach its present position. Throughout all these millenniums, providence has been working out the plan of progressive evolution. The two thoughts are not opposed in practice, only in man's mistaken concepts. Divine providence is never arrayed in opposition to true human progress, either temporal or spiritual. Providence is always consistent with the unchanging and perfect nature of the Supreme Lawgiver. God is faithful, and all His commandments are just. His faithfulness is established in the very skies. Forever, O Lord, Your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness is to all generations. You have established the earth, and it abides. He is a faithful Creator. There is no limitation of the forces and personalities which the Father may use to uphold His purpose and sustain His creatures. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Behold, he who keeps us shall neither slumber nor sleep. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. God upholds all things by the word of his power. And when new worlds are born, he sends forth his sons, and they are created. God not only creates, but he preserves them all. God constantly upholds all things material and all beings spiritual. The universes are eternally stable. There is stability in the midst of apparent instability. There is an underlying order and security in the midst of the energy upheavals and the physical cataclysms of the starry realms. The Universal Father has not withdrawn from the management of the universes. He is not an inactive deity. If God should retire as the present upholder of all creation, there would immediately occur a universal collapse. Except for God, there would be no such thing as reality. At this very moment, as during the remote ages of the past and in the eternal future, God continues to uphold. The divine reach extends around the circle of eternity. The universe is not wound up like a clock to run just so long and then cease to function. All things are constantly being renewed. The Father unceasingly pours forth energy, light, and life. The work of God is literal as well as spiritual. He stretches out the north over the empty space and hangs the earth upon nothing. A being of my order is able to discover ultimate harmony and to detect far-reaching and profound coordination in the routine affairs of universe administration. Much that seems disjointed and haphazard to the mortal mind appears orderly and constructive to my understanding. But there is very much going on in the universes that I do not fully comprehend. I have long been a student of, and am more or less conversant with, the recognized forces, energies, minds, moranches, spirits, and personalities of the local universes and the super-universes. I have a general understanding of how these agencies and personalities operate, and I am intimately familiar with the workings of the accredited spirit intelligences of the grand universe. Notwithstanding my knowledge of the phenomena of the universes, I am constantly confronted with cosmic reactions which I cannot fully fathom. I am continually encountering apparently fortuitous conspiracies of the interassociation of forces, energies, intellects, and spirits which I cannot satisfactorily explain. I am entirely competent to trace out and to analyze the working of all phenomena directly resulting from the functioning of the Universal Father, the Eternal Son, and the Infinite Spirit, and to a large extent the Isle of Paradise. 
my perplexity is occasioned by encountering what appears to be the performance of their mysterious coordinates, the three absolutes of potentiality. These absolutes seem to supersede matter, to transcend mind, and to supervene spirit. I am constantly confused and often perplexed by my inability to comprehend these complex transactions which I attribute to the presences and performances of the unqualified absolute, the deity absolute, and the universal absolute. These absolutes must be the not fully revealed presences abroad in the universe which, in the phenomena of space potency and in the function of other superultimates, render it impossible for physicists, philosophers, or even religionists to predict with certainty as to just how the primordials of force, concept, or spirit will respond to demands made in a complex reality situation involving supreme adjustments and ultimate values. There is also an organic unity in the universes of time and space which seems to underlie the whole fabric of cosmic events. This living presence of the evolving supreme being, this imminence of the projected incomplete, is inexplicably manifested ever and anon by what appears to be an amazingly fortuitous coordination of apparently unrelated universe happenings. This must be the function of providence, the realm of the supreme being and the conjoint actor. I am inclined to believe that it is this far-flung and generally unrecognizable control of the coordination and interassociation of all phases and forms of universe activity that causes such a variegated and apparently hopelessly confused medley of physical, mental, moral, and spiritual phenomena so unerringly to work out to the glory of God and for the good of men and angels. But in the larger sense, the apparent accidents of the cosmos are undoubtedly a part of the finite drama of the time-space adventure of the infinite in his eternal manipulation of the absolutes. <laughs>